I'm here at Peddler's Mall in Louisville, Kentucky, and I've got some good pieces, it looks like, of ceramics and glass on these shelves. You can't really pass by these particular types. A marigold piece of um, candy dish carnival glass. This is, this is incised. So look at how you can actually even feel that interior area where you can see all of those, all of those pieces, those little tiny incisions, right, that are basically cut into this piece of carnival glass. It's called marigold uh, for the color, and it's iridescent glass, so they take metallic salts, and they basically have those uh, introduced during the glass process, the glass manufacturing process. Look at the difference between this piece of carnival glass, right, the candy dish, and just in the color and just in the quality and just in the, in the condition of this piece of carnival glass, okay? You can see how this is consistent all the way. You can see how this has been used and is inconsistent. So the most inconsistent area where the metallic salt basically melted, if you will, right here. You can see it on the inside, all in here. So if you look in there, you can basically see just how that looks. Now let's take a look for value, then we'll talk about that big dish in the back. So the vase, which is a freeform piece, American. We got a mark, we have no label. Oh, there's a label on the other side, okay, good. We got no mark, but this piece looks like West Virginia to me. And they want $22.50 for the tulip carnival piece. They're calling it amber. I wouldn't call it amber. Um, I don't see a mark. I do see some consistent issues with it. And that is, of course, issues like down here. Um, probably was used for flowers and during its lifetime, if you will. <laughs> so I think condition is going to be a problem. I also think the quality of how it's made is this one, much brighter all the way around. Brighter on this, on the exterior, brighter and consistent on the interior. They want $22.50 for this one. They want $25 for this one. This one is worth $55. This one is worth about $25. So I'd definitely take this one if I was uh, taking them, but I don't take anything. I leave this all for you because I want you to succeed. I don't want to compete with you. I want to show you what you should thrift for, and then you can come and you can get it yourself. So then you, if you want to flip it or add it to your collection. This piece is a nice piece, and for $24, I think this is better than any of those other two pieces in terms of a bargain. So marigold iris plate. It's got a serpentine edge, and that piece, by the pattern, we would know that this is American and, of course, the 1940s to the 1960s. I'd put that straight up 1950. Look at that purple. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little elements of purple in this nice marigold piece. And the texture is nice as well. I like it because it holds a lot of color. These carnival glass pieces not only have to have a nice decoration, but also they need to hold a lot of color. Um, this one's $24. That plate is $65 all day, every day. That's a beautiful plate. I wouldn't put it on one of these metal plate stands because it could scratch it. So I wouldn't do that, but that's what they're doing here. They want $24, um, but a big cake plate like this, so you can measure five, you know, here's six inches, probably 10 inches in diameter. That's a really nice piece. I like that piece. And uh, I, don't, I don't see any scratches on it. It looks good. What would I avoid? I'd avoid this. Here's why I would avoid this. You'd all say, I love blue glass, Dr. Lori. I think it's great. I don't like. Uh, you, you see how you've got this white line that goes along here? And all of a sudden, the blue is melted in. And then over here, it's clear glass. It's not supposed to look like that. That is not how it's supposed to look. They want 15 for it. It's a crease. It's made in Japan. But I don't think it looks good at all. I don't think it's well done. I, think, I don't think it's very well representative of this maker. Here's the mark. The mark's still on it um, from the Crease Corporation. I, I don't like that they missed the boat here because this is just sloppy. This can be done well. Um, I do like the form. I do like the size. I like the shape. But I don't like the way this free form is having all of this sort of melt into one another. They could have controlled this. So that to me says you really got to work on it, guys. How much do they want for that? Oh, and they wanted $15.
That's a no. I'm sorry. That's a no. So not everything's terrific. All these bubbles, it's a nice rose bowl, not hurting anybody, but all these bubbles that you inside there, low quality. You see all these bubbles in a piece like this, low quality. So, um, well, if, as long as you get it at a, at a low price, okay, but I would say that these, you know, this is, you want 10 bucks for that? No. They're, what they're working on here, and look at this, all in here. That's not a very good pinch either. The pinch should be consistent all the way around. That's this area. It should be consistent all the way. It shouldn't be thin over here and thicker over here. But the bubbles are really the telltale sign, and I wouldn't spend $10 on that. So I'd leave that over here too with this one. I love that. If you compare this teapot with the moriage that you can feel, so you can feel the texture. You can even see the texture. See how it comes up? See how the texture comes up? So there's the flatness of the blue and then the white comes up. That's called moriage, wet slipware. It's actually painted on after the gilt or after all the gold leaf is put on. I don't like tape, I never like tape. I wish they wouldn't use tape. I say that all, the, all different places. I understand you're, you're happy you got the lid. You don't wanna lose the lid, but maybe we can have a different solution. Some people use saran wrap, but a different solution for this. So this is an enamel teapot. Um, you can see it's light in weight. When you pick it up, it's light in weight. It's small and diminutive. And here's why it's so much better than a vessel like this. So you see these two different vessels. Both have moriage or that, that wet slip wear. This one doesn't have it as significant, which is why the value is lower. It has some where you can feel the texture on these roses, on these flowers but not the same type and not the same abundance of it as this one. So this is, they're off, they want, they want 35 for this, probably because of its Asian feel. A lot of people decorate with Asian pieces. A lot of people like that. This piece does not have a mark either. I'll show you the underside. No mark at all. I've showed you before. This piece is probably made in Japan um, in a style that is very typical and indicative of early Japanese porcelains. So you see there's no mark. You can see that it's quite large, um, bulbous, and de highly decorated. You know, there's Mount Fuji, and here's some geisha, and here's um, continuing the same patterns with the green and the blue and the pink. You know, um, so a lot of de dedication and time to painting it, but not with high quality materials. So yay, okay, you painted it, but this piece, they actually used higher quality materials and also took the time to paint it. So I really like this piece. And with this one being so much more than this one, this would be my buy. Uh, at 24, it's probably worth 25. So you're paying about retail for it, but I do like that, that's nice. And here's a color that's very indicative of the 1920s and 30s. This too is a piece of glass and look at that flower. Now the flower has faded some, but this little creamer is really very precious. It, the flower is faded, but the form is really good. Look at the thickness right there. That's a thick piece of glass. Now granted, it is, of course, you can find the seam, and you can see that it's, of course, molded glass. And as I said, the flower, it is early 1900s. The flower is basically faded, would have been a little bit brighter. It's unmarked, but it does have that characteristic starburst on the bottom, which we typically see in, out of most American manufacturers, uh, glass manufacturing companies. And I think this is a nice piece. It's in nice condition. There's no little chips. It's old. So you're looking at that. Let's see what we've got in terms of that time, what they want for it. Yeah, they want 15, which doesn't surprise me at all. Um, this particular area they're saying is hand-painted. Here it says hand-painted. Well, in fact, that's not hand-painted. That piece is actually put on with a stencil. So that stencil that kind of goes on and then they pull it off. Um, they might highlight areas, but most of that is stenciled on. It also looks good without the flower, I have to say. But really, this piece came, of course, with a sugar bowl. And it would sit on a, a late 1920s, early 1930s table in the United States. Uh, today, this piece is probably worth about $25 alone uh, for that piece of glass. It's really nice. I like it. It's opaque. 
it's in good condition, it's a beautiful color, and you can see the suggestion of the flower. So remember, you're looking for thickness right here at the top and that starburst at the bottom. Don't forget about that starburst at the bottom. Even though there is not a characteristic manufacturer's mark on it, the Starbucks will tell you um, in the early 20th century and the piece is an American made piece. I really like that piece. It's funny because recently I was in the land of Hershey. <laughs> I was in Hershey, Pennsylvania with the Reese's people. <laughs> and uh, I would say that, you know, these are fun. You have a couple sets of Maxwell House advertisement. And uh, a lot of people like this. A lot of people like these advertising uh, mugs. There are a couple more Maxwell House advertising mugs way in the back, too. Oh, there's actually five. Holy moly, wow, that's a lot. One, two, three, four, five. But different time periods. Do you see how they're different? White on the interior, white on the interior, and then the older ones are red on the interior. I'll show you an old versus a new. You know, old versus new in this case. Older, newer. But people like uh, advertising collectibles. They like things that relate to a particular company. And coffee is so big. So many people are collecting coffee stuff. Coffee tins, coffee cans, coffee mugs. Um, these are nice. Both of them made in Japan. This one's actually, this one's made in Japan. This one's made in England, right? And you can see the difference in the quality. First of all, the color. The red color here made in England closer to the Maxwell House jar. Um, the vessel, and then of course, there's their very famous logo, Good to the Last Drop. So I'll put these back. I would probably take these three, if they're not more than a couple bucks each. Oh, see, they're $7 each. $7.50. They're worth eight bucks a piece. So they're almost right on retail. Oh, I love him. I love owls. My dad loved owls. Look at him. He's so cute. Tara Reed Designs. You remember, I don't know if you remember Tara Reed, but Tara Reed, uh, pretty popular in the 90s. Really cute. I like that. It's owls, of course, symbols of uh, everything from wisdom to knowledge. And this one's kind of fun. I like that. Let's put that up there. How much is this? $8.50. A little high. I think that's a little high for Tara Reed. I, I think I'd probably, he's cute, but he's not that cute. Jam packed with bargains. That's what we found here at Peddler's Mall in Louisville, Kentucky.